right, let's take a look at one more example of that. Data was collected from a survey of 800 U.S. adults ages 18 to 29. 27% reported that they got their news from TV. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the population proportion of 18 to 29 year olds who get their news from television. I need to determine what my P hat is. Now, P hat is supposed to be the number of successes divided by the sample size. In this case, I don't have the number of successes. I actually have the percentage of successes, which is exactly what this formula does. So in other words, it's as if they've already used this formula for us, and they've told us that p hat is 27% or uh, 0 0.27. That would mean that Q hat is 1 minus 0.27, which gives us 0 0.73. And now before going any further, I'm going to check what I get for N times P hat and N times Q hat. Both of my calculations are in fact bigger than or equal to five, so I can approximate my binomial probability distribution with a normal probability distribution. My confidence level that I'm looking for is 99%, and the critical z-score was 2.575. I would next go to my margin of error formula, again, the one for this binomial probability proportion. Substitute in my values. And again, it's a useful exercise for you to pick up whatever calculator you're using and make sure that you can type this in and get the proper answer, which should be approximately 0 0.040. And the final step is then to subtract and add that to create the interval for the population proportion of success. All right, so if you subtract, you get 0 0.23 as a lower boundary, or 23%. And then as an upper boundary, you get 0 0.31, which is the same as 31%. Since our point estimate for the population proportion of success was 27%, we use that to determine, we can say with 99% confidence that the population proportion of 18 to 29 year olds who get their news from TV is going to be between 23 and 31%. And as always, you know, we would like these two numbers to be really close together um, because then our answer would be more precise. So we can increase the precision of the confidence interval without decreasing the level of confidence by increasing the sample size. So just like in a previous section, we had a formula for the minimum sample size. We have a variation of that formula for the minimum sample size n that's needed to estimate a population proportion. So again, instead of estimating a population mean, we're estimating a population proportion of success for a binomial experiment. As with the previous version of this formula, we always round up to the next whole number. And the formula does assume that you have preliminary estimates of p hat and q hat. If not, you're supposed to use 50% for each. So in order to use this formula, we have to have a way to estimate the probabilities of success and failure. So take a look at example four. It says you're running a political campaign and you wanna estimate with 95% confidence the population proportion of registered voters who will vote for your candidate. Your estimate must be accurate within 3% of the actual population proportion. So we don't want a margin of error more than 3%. 
So it says find the minimum sample size needed when, and we've got both situations here, when we really have no idea. So no preliminary estimate is available, which really means I don't have any previous polling data. I have no idea what proportion of the population of registered voters is that will vote for this candidate. And then number two, we'll do it over again, but this time we have a preliminary estimate. So usually that means we have a previous survey that we can use as a basis. When you don't have any preliminary estimate, you will let P hat and Q hat both be 50%. So a 50-50 shot, in other words, that someone will vote for this candidate. We want a 95% level of confidence, 0.95. So we need to find the corresponding Z score by looking it up in the table, which is 1.96. And then the final piece of information that we're given is your estimate has to be accurate within 3% of the actual answer. So that's my margin of error. It's 3%, which is the same as the decimal 0 0.03. I just take those numbers and go to my formula. Again, make sure you're using the one not for the population mean, but for the population proportion. I fill in my P hat and Q hat. I have my critical Z score, which is 1.96. And I divide that by my margin of error, 0 0.03. And don't forget to put a squared on this fraction. So if you multiply these all together, you get approximately 1,067.11. And because that's not a realistic sample size, I'm not going to have 0.11 people uh, participate in this survey that I'm going to do. I'm going to round that up to the next whole value. So I want my sample size to be 1,068 in order to guarantee that with 95% confidence, I can determine the population proportion of registered voters who will vote for my candidate within a margin of error of 3%. Now, the only difference in doing the part two is, again, we must have some previous polling data that allows us to believe that P hat, the likelihood that people, that registered voters will vote for this candidate is 31% or 0.31. So my Q hat, I do one minus this value, which gives me 0 0.69 for Q hat. And I substitute that again into the exact same formula I used above to determine my sample size. I do P hat times Q hat, the fractional portion is going to be the same, 1.96 over 0 0.03 squared. And if you multiply those together, you'll get approximately 913.02, and we always round that up. So I need a sample size of 914, in order to guarantee that I can be 95% confident that my estimate will be within 3% of the actual population proportion who will vote for this candidate. So once again, we can see that the confidence interval formulas are all very similar, which in some sense makes it easier because you understand how these work by now, but also can make it more difficult because you have to remember when do I use this version of this formula and when do I use a different version.